Welcome, my constant reader friends. I'm Tad, and this is Tad Reads Books and Stuff. All right, we're in the full swing now, spooky season, and I've got a couple things to update. So first off, Rosemary's Baby. I am 150 pages through this book. It's not a long book. It's only like 245 pages. I will be finishing that probably today or tomorrow. Um, it's going great. You know, after that, I'm going to be reading, of course, Son of Rosemary. I have never read this one before. And I'm also, you know what? I'm just having a good, I'm just having a good month already. The Exorcist, I already started. I just picked it up and man, this, it's such an easy read. It's almost like reading a script, you know, uh, it's fast. I'm already 150 pages into this and it's just hard to put down once you start, once you start reading it, I should hold it up so you can see it. It's hard to put down once you start reading it. And I'm having a blast with that. So I'm way, way ahead in uh, schedule so far. Um, so what have I finished reading this week? Well, if you all, I'm going to hold this up here for you. Knife Point Horror. If you have been a constant uh, viewer of my channel, you will know that I spoke about this podcast um, back in June, June 6th actually is when I, I released that video. This is a podcast by Soren Narnia and it's freaking awesome. I, I don't know what to say about it. I, I, you can go back and watch that video. I'm going to set this down here. You can go back and watch that video if you want. Um, so what do they, they call it, uh, they're classifying it as this uh, quiet horror. And it's a podcast that he produces. He usually does the voice work um, of it. There are some other uh, people that do read, play some parts in his podcast. And he doesn't really release them on a regular schedule. He releases them when they're done. Now, he also has a YouTube channel, so you can check that out too. I'll put the link in the comments for him. Now, he came out with, and in perfect timing of course, he came out with a new release and he's calling it um, a compendium for Halloween. Eight very different stories for the season. Now, this is only, I mean, if you listen to the whole thing back to back, there are eight short stories. There, it's an hour and 16 minutes. Um, I can't believe that anyone that watches this channel doesn't drive to work or doesn't have a uh, phone and could easily get this podcast and listen to it. I think you're going to love it. If you like horror at all, you're going to love it. But let me just give you real quick. So there's eight stories in this podcast that I just released. Number one is The Hitcher. Number two is, is it that time again? That one's pretty cool because on his YouTube channel, he actually did um, a video for it. I'll tell you, the, the video's cool. It's black and white. It's kind of creepy, but the the story actually is, is much better than the video. Sorry, Soren. Um, anyways, the number three is Prodigal. Number four is uh, Panophobe. My, my fingers, I'm not counting correctly. Uh, <laughs> number five is Legalese. Number six is Contestants. Number seven is A Bitter Pill. And the last one is Blueberries. It's just a silly uh, little scary story there. Blueberries. Um, I, I think you're going to love it. Really, I, I can't drive this point home enough. Knife Point Horror by Soren Narnia is an awesome podcast. Again, there is a novel that you can, you know, a book that you can get of his early, I think they're like, I can't remember, 13, 11 or 13 stories. You can get that, but uh, really it shines as a podcast, and uh, I just think everybody should watch it. All right, let's go on to the next one. So now let's talk about the next book that I finished 
uh, so far this month. So this one, nice slip cover, is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. This is a pretty cool version here. This one that I have um, is a Heritage Press New York uh, release. The original publication of Turn of the Screw was in 1898, and it was done uh, as a serial, you know, in serial form, in a, 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 a like a newspaper press. And but this one is Heritage Press New York, published in 1949. Now this version has 145 pages, and on Goodreads, Turn of the Screw has a 3.4 rating. Not great. I like this. This is really cool. It almost looks, you know, like um, a Folio Society type book. I got this in, geez, I can't even remember, years ago in a thrift store. I picked this up. Really cool. It comes with this little Heritage Club. Uh, it's called the Sand Glass. And it says it's uh, issued monthly to the members of the Heritage Club, 595 Madison Avenue, New York, 22. And this one is the case of the Screaming Heebie Jeebies. And it just talks about uh, this version of the book and how they came around to publishing it. And mostly it talks about um, Mariette Littis who is the illustrator in this book. Let me set this aside here. There are some pretty cool illustrations in, in this book. Um, she was a famous illustrator of the time. Let me see here. Let me find one for you or a couple for you. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's Flora right there, the little girl in the story. Who else do we have? I think we got just about everybody. There's Miles, the little boy, her her older brother. And I mean, I don't. I guess I'm not going to show all of them to you. But there's, it's just throughout the whole book. There's a uh, Peter Quint. He was a hired hand. So let's start talking about this a little bit. So it's a gothic ghost story. And I was doing some reading on Henry James. So at this time in his life, I guess he was uh, needing some money. Uh, so he took on this commission to write a gothic ghost story. Uh, some writings of his talk about him saying, uh, oh, I finally finished my little ghost story. I don't think he was too much into it. I think he was just doing it for the money at the time. This book starts off with this gentleman telling a ghost story to a group of people. And of course, it's on Christmas. So I'm wondering too if Henry was trying to take advantage of the popularity, of course, of Charles Dickens by producing a Christmas ghost story. I don't know. Maybe. I'm just saying. Uh, what is it? So he starts telling this ghost story. Then it goes into the voice of the governess. And the governess is telling this, this story. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to save my, my opinions of it for later. Let's just talk about the story first off. So this girl lady gets hired to be the governess of two young children in a remote like grand estate out in the middle of kind of nowhere in this place called Bly. The town's called Bly. It's in Essex, uh, England. And it's two young children that are the niece and nephew of this very wealthy man. Parents passed away in an accident and he really kind of doesn't want anything to do with them but he needs somebody to take care of them. So she gets hired, she goes out there, and immediately she meets, uh, well, first off, the housekeeper, and the housekeeper's name is Mrs. Gross. 
Uh, great name, Henry. Very uh, foreboding there, Mrs. Gross. Uh, interesting choice of names. Anyway, so then, of course, she meets the uh, young girl. Flora is her name. And then, of course, her older brother by just a couple of years, and his name's Miles. Miles has just been expelled from his boarding school, and we really don't know why. She tries to find out through the book why he was expelled, but we don't really get an answer to that. Also, they never really name the governess. We don't really know her name. But through her dealing with the kids and Mrs. Gross, she does find out that the prior govern governess, uh, Miss Jessel, and a uh, hired hand uh, was Peter Quint, mysteriously, or they don't really know how, both died. And there are rumors that they were connected somehow. Anyways, this starts, I think, the governess, this new governess's mind, you know, going on this fantasy of what's what happened to them. The book really isn't very, what's the word I want to use? It doesn't, it's very abstract. It doesn't really explain a lot. He puts out a lot of bits and pieces of information like like Miles why did he get expelled from school ah we don't know why did Miss Jessel what was going on between Miss Jessel and this Peter Quint eh, we don't really know what's up with Mrs. Gross why can't she just take care of the kids really I don't know <laughs> it kind of goes from there all right so I guess you're you're kind of getting my feel for this I didn't dig the book very much um, it's short, right? It's only 145 pages and apparently it's been very influential to horror writers ever since. The 1898, well 1898 when it was published. Um, even Stephen King talks about um, Haunting of Hill House, which is another book that I read earlier this year. This one and Turn of the Screw as being really the seminal ghost stories uh, of our time. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't see it. I guess it has been very influential. I mean, there's been, there's been an operas made about this book, several movies, um, stage, you know, theater, Broadway, TV, new TV series uh, that I watched, The Haunting of Hill House and then The Haunting of Bly Manor um, were freaking excellent. Uh, so it's weird for me to say that a, a TV show is better than the book. But in my opinion, it, now of course it was their kind of interpretation and they could fill in, there's more characters and they fill in a lot in that TV show. If you haven't seen it, it's great. Um, I became aware of this book, believe it or not, when I was a young kid. I used to, I, I, I tend to talk about my mother a lot on this channel. I used to love to sit in the afternoons with my mother and watch Dark Shadows. Uh, if you all have, if you, you're younger and you haven't seen Dark Shadows, it's a really campy um, TV show that they had, you know, like a soap opera back in the day. Uh, started out black and white. That's how old it is. Uh, about a vampire, Barnabas Collins. Anyways, in that series, there was actually a storyline that was taken from Turn of the Screw. And it was a story about two young kids getting kind of uh, taken over by this ghost. And the ghost's name was Quentin Collins. You know, like Peter Quentin in, in the book. And his his effort actually Barnabas's effort tries to go back in time and and prevent this Quentin from becoming a ghost and taking over these children 
it was convoluted. It, it was strange. It was weird. It was a weird show, but I loved it. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. I still go back and find it online and watch old episodes of it. Even there was a storyline that they, they took from Turn of the Screw in Star Trek. So you can see, I it, it's huge. I really don't know why. I, I think Henry James kind of mailed it in on this one. I think he just wanted the paycheck. Um, it's very pretentious. Now, the governess does talk in here about her being more educated than than the housekeeper and using language constantly that the housekeeper has to ask her what she's talking about what she means by those words it, it's very pretentious I think um, and I'm having this problem with some of these older style writings being these incredibly long sentences with a million commas in the sentence. Um, not the style of writing, of course, today, but of then. I just, um, I gotta be honest, I don't know why this is so influential and so popular among scholars. Um, I, I didn't dig it. It's, it's kind of a throwaway novel to me. I love this version of it that I have. This is really cool, I love that. But as a book, not so great. So, I mean, there's not much more for me to say about this. I, I'm sorry. If you really like the book, um, please tell me why. Tell me why I'm wrong in not, not really digging this. Of the two, The Haunting of Hill House and Turn of the Screw that I've read this year, Haunting of Hill House is going to be probably my, my favorite book of the year, or right up there as one of my favorite books read of the year, but this one will not be. All right, guys, that's my reading so far. Can't wait to get back and finish uh, Rosemary's Baby, uh, Son of Rosemary, Exorcist, Legion, Peter Straub. Um, all right, I hope you enjoy the videos. If you find any entertaining value, please like and subscribe. And of course, send me your comments because I love them. Tell me what you think of Turn of the Screw. I'd be very interested to hear. All right. Thank you. Peace out.